So you're thinking of making a switch to Linux in 2026. Hey, I think it is the year of the Linux desktop. Well, I mean, people have been saying that for decades, but I've been using it for around about a year at this stage. I've had pitfalls, I've had problems, I've had experiences that I think you can't get on Windows for good, bad and indifferent. I want you to watch this video to understand from someone who's myself is a novice and you are going to be a novice moving to Linux, what you should and shouldn't do, what kind of pitfalls you're going to fall into and everything else in between. So yeah, let's get into it. Do me solid though, if you really like this kind of content from gaming, Linux, whatever it happens to be, all that kind of jazz, do me a solid, hit that subscribe button. I want to make more content like this and I'll be diving into all the machinations of things you can and can't do with desktop architecture like this in the future. Cheers. So you're sick of Windows. You've reached your the end of your tether, as it were. You're pissed off with Microsoft. You don't want to use Mac. You want to try and make the transition over to Linux. You've seen people having a good time. You may have seen a previous video I made here on the channel that I said I'm all in on Linux. Well, technically that isn't true because I use Mac for day to day, but here is the, I guess the bottom line. If you are looking for something to just effectively change the way you use your PC, probably going to be this for good, bad, and for indifference, as I say. The problem with Linux at this point in time is there aren't that many people using it. In terms of globally, there's about four to five percent of the global market share is Linux desktops. Yes, architecturally, people are using them on servers and it powers a lot of the systems that we all use day to day. But in terms of desktops, there aren't that many people out there using Linux. So that means you're going into an area where there are less people, maybe more technically inclined people to effectively help you if you encounter problems. With Windows, yes, it's easy. You pick up an off the shelf component effectively and you put it to work with the hardware that you have or you buy a laptop, you buy desktop, whatever it is. Windows is gonna have lots of support, lots of software support and lots of developer support for that matter. So one of the first decisions I think you need to make before deciding, hey, I just want to change the scenery, which I think is a valid reason in and of itself is what software or what gaming hardware and gaming software do you need to use on a day to day basis? I'm quite lucky in that I made the switch because my PC is primarily used for gaming. I don't use many productivity applications. I don't need to have access to Adobe packages on my gaming PC because it is a gaming PC. That's all it is probably ever going to be used for. Yes, I can do certain things like I can edit documents. I can access other pieces of software that I might potentially use like DaVinci Resolve for video editing, but you are going to have to deal with workarounds potentially for the software you may need to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's use Microsoft Teams as a prime example of a piece of software certain people might need on their Windows computers. This is available on Linux, but you will probably be using it within an Electron wrapper, i.e. it is technically just a small web page. Progressive web apps, they can fulfill certain things that you may need to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So yes, you can get by when using Linux for work-related tasks. That's probably the best way I can describe it. For more intensive things where you need dedicated applications, your mileage may vary quite rapidly. So what I would do is I would go through, check if you have an option available to you or a decent workaround and test that before you make the jump. Go and read reviews of it. Don't just go whole hog and dive in because you will get frustrated by the lack of support. For instance, say Photoshop. Adobe packages simply do not work on Linux. So you will be using alternatives like GIMP, for instance. You may use DaVinci Resolve for video editing. You may use Audacity for audio editing, but they are not going to be quite as intense or have as many tools right out of the box in a lot of cases. Yes, open source software is available and you do have options that can fulfill certain tasks, but they might not be quite how you remember them or how you use them day to day. And that gives you a learning curve that you have to overcome. Another thing that ties into software support and also help for those pieces of software is, are you willing to put the time and effort in to diagnose problems for yourself or resolve them with the help of people online. I don't think Linux is as easy as say Windows because there just surely isn't, the, there isn't the amount of user base out there to help you with certain problems. So you may encounter an issue and not know the reason why you're encountering such a problem. The, the, downs, the upside here is that there are lots of people now using the platform. So there are forums out there. You can use Reddit, you can use AI also to help you pinpoint a certain problem. But because there are certain distros, and I'll get into that into a moment, you are going to have to work through problems yourself and try and diagnose them before you can get the help that you need. You also need to be comfortable using the terminal to put in commands to resolve certain issues. I have to say, I'm still not fully comfortable using terminal, but I have, and I've forced myself to get more comfortable in that space. 
it is a daunting prospect at first, but once you start to get to grips with things, it does help you understand problems that you may have with your computer as you are using Linux, the longer, of course, that you use the platform. So I mentioned distros there just a moment ago. You're also going to need to decide which is the distro for you. There are lots of lots of options out there. I'm currently using Bazite, which I think is based on Fedora on my gaming PC behind me. Gaming is my primary concern with that device, so I don't need much in the way of customization. I don't necessarily need to be at the bleeding edge of things. I just want it to work with my AMD, all AMD build. Because Bazite's fine for that. I just run Steam, I run Chrome, I run Discord, a few other applications, nothing too drastic. It's working just fine for me. But there are so many distros out there and effectively flavors of Linux that you can try and find that is a perfect fit for you. So you're going to have to do some pre-research to work out where you are comfortable. Obviously, there are some that will hold your hand and be more like a Windows experience. I do think Bazite fulfills that for a lot of people who've used the Steam Deck. And that's why I went down that route. I think you are going to have to seriously consider what you want and need from your OS. And that is where you're going to get into the murky world of distros. There are a lot of people who will be in the comments down below telling me their favorite platform or their favorite distro. And I'm sure, and I think in the future, I'm going to try Arch. I'm going to try Cache OS, which a lot of people have recommended to me. But for now, I'm happy with the way things are. Maybe in a few months time and we'll see some videos of me diving into other distros out there and getting to grips with more of Linux. And I'm excited to do that, but you're going to have to make that decision for yourself. No one can force you to do what you don't want to do. Another major consideration that also ties into distros is what hardware do you currently have? So there are some issues with specific pieces of hardware, which means it's not going to be a smooth sailing experience by putting Linux on them. For instance, NVIDIA GPUs don't necessarily work as cleanly as they do with AMD GPUs. So if, like me, you're a gamer, it does tend to be better for you to go with an all AMD build. That isn't always the case, and it is getting better as time progresses. And even in the almost year or so that I've been using Bazite, it has improved drastically for those third-party GPUs. You are going to then therefore need to work out what certain things that you, you need to put in place to make that transition smooth. I think anyone with an NVIDIA GPU, it's you're probably going to have a good time. I'm not going to deny that. You will have a great time with Linux, but it might not be quite as, uh, as, as painless as it were with regards to AMD because the GPU drivers don't necessarily work in the same way. They have to be ported. Yeah, it's a whole thing, but it is something that you do need to consider as well. Sticking with GPUs, because I think this is definitely tangentially linked, is that you are not going to be able to play all of the games if you're a gamer like me and you've made this switch. You're not going to be able to play all of the titles that you can on Windows. There are certain things in place with regards to kernel level anti-cheat, which means certain titles just simply won't run that you can't install. Well, you might be able to install them, actually, but you won't be able to run them. The com Proton compatibility layer that Valve has helped really push over the past few years won't work for those because, as I say, the anti-cheat will just mean you won't be able to launch these titles. The sad thing is that some of the biggest titles out there with regards to Apex Legends, Call of Duty, I think Valorant, there are a few others out there. I'll leave some on screen if I find some that are more notable. They will not run. You won't be able to play them unless you have workarounds. And this is another thing that ties back into the software that I talked about at the start of this video is that you will need to work out if certain software is going to enable you to play certain games. So let's take, for example, GeForce Now. A lot of you out there are going to have be bottlenecked by the internet connection speeds that you have available to you, so you won't be able to do game streaming. But game streaming through GeForce Now allows you to play certain Windows titles because effectively you are running a stream to a Windows PC in a data center somewhere around the globe. And that means if you can't play games like Apex Legends locally, you can play them through game streaming. So that's an option if you do want to play certain titles. Yes, it might not be perfect. It's not as good as being able to play it and run it locally, but it is a solution. And that's one thing that I think that Linux does have that maybe didn't exist five to six years ago. This is a really good option, as I say, for people like myself who want to play Apex Legends. Yeah, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be having as much fun. I do, I'm lucky that I have a gigabit internet connection. And as you can see on screen now, the performance seems to be okay. 120 FPS, it runs really nicely in the cloud. The latency might be an issue to some people. That might be a game breaker, but work out if there are options like this that allow you to play the titles that you want to play. Another thing to really think about as well is that as time progresses, if you get in now, you're going to have a better experience as time goes on. For instance, Chrome OS, which is obviously run by Google, 
is technically on its way out, they may be replacing that with an Android desktop operating system, which means Chrome OS itself could go by the wayside. And while Android is a great mobile operating system, there's still question marks of whether it'll make that transition to a true desktop option, which has all of the software and has similar compromises in a lot of ways, and in some ways more so than Linux as an option. So I think that people moving forward will start to look seriously at Linux. You may be obviously watching this video and thinking, I'm ready to make that move. In the next few years, we could say a real, real big shift with Valve introducing their Steam machines again and Steam decks and hardware such as the Lenovo Legion Go S now offering Steam OS as an option. Linux is out there in the wild and doing more than it ever has done before. I do think that it's a really good time to consider it. Yes, maybe not. Don't make that switch right now if you're on the fence. But if you are on the fence and really looking to jump over, I don't think it's been a better time to do so. Hopefully this has helped you out. I know it's not the most intense video. I'm not an expert on Linux. I'm just someone who's been using it and enjoying it. And really, I think I champion it probably more than I ever have any of the mobile OS apart from Android. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, yeah, leave a comment down below and hopefully you'll make the right decision. Let me know what you think as well. I wanna know, are you gonna make that decision in 2026? There's gonna be more content like this as well, diving into the machinations, but cheers for watching. I'll speak to you next one.